So my name is Jason Halusum here from Brilliant Directories and also of course we have with us the uh, amazing Patrick uh, Burnell with us today as well. Hi everybody, great to be here as always, really uh, looking forward to this webinar Wednesday. Yeah, something a little exciting. We are also streaming on Facebook Live today. So those of us who can who, who can join into the, the GoToWebinar, amazing. Uh, you can interact with us and um, ask questions and those on Facebook Live can uh, check out the presentation and listen to everything that we're talking about today. So just to introduce ourselves again, we have a lot of people who are uh, joining us for the first time. Uh, my name is Jason, the co-founder here at Brilliant Directories. And Patrick Burnell is, we're very, very lucky to have Patrick. He's our brand manager here at Brilliant Directories and responsible for a lot of the, the features that we see um, recommended by, by our customers. All right, thank you, Jason. It's uh, an honor to be here and be a part of this team. I definitely love what I do and get to work with everybody that's in this webinar and all our customers around the world. Again, for those of you joining, if you haven't yet joined our LinkedIn group, I highly recommend joining Brilliant Directory's LinkedIn group. Uh, you can um, network and meet like-minded uh, directory website owners, membership website owners, and what we like to do in that group is talk strategy. Uh, it's a little bit more than designing your site, it's more about how to turn your site into um, a, a better conversion tool for whatever your goals are uh, with your directory website. So you can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash LinkedIn to join our marketing strategy network there. And just um, not many ground rules, just one. Uh, the goal of this webinar is we'd like to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and the goal is to show off the software for new and existing customers so you can better learn how the platform works and its capabilities. And the type of questions you can ask, we want to be fair to everyone. So we're going to try to focus and limit questions to one per person until we've, had, we've let everyone have an opportunity to at least ask one question. And we're going to do our best to get to as many questions as possible. And we had a contest winner last week. Uh, so Kevin submitted a, a video review um, of his experience with Brilliant Directories. Uh, so Kevin, all you need to do is email support at brilliantdirectories.com and you've won a uh, $400 free website audit uh, with Patrick. And Patrick, do you want to let everyone know a little bit about what the website audit uh, includes and what it's for? Yes, I would love to, Jason. So Kevin, we'll be discussing some different strategies that you can use for your website to help drive traffic to the site, to get more people to submit leads, which are which is one of the primary ways that you get members to go from free members to paid members. Uh, I'll show you how to possibly do some social media campaigns that are working well with other customers. I'll give you some insider tips, maybe even discuss some effective landing pages. Uh, and help get those things set up as well. So we cover a lot of interesting topics that you don't get to really go over in a regular um, website uh, website edits call or a, a member management call. So it's higher level strategy uh, to help make your site a successful one. So definitely looking forward to connecting with you and showing you uh, what we can do with your site. I have a question for you, Pat. At what stage would someone want would this website audit review be helpful for someone? Is it someone who's just starting out or they've had their site online for a long time? Who is this so really two, beneficial for? There's two primary stages. To me, the most beneficial of all is before somebody even gets started. So kind of the first thing you book is this audit session um, so that we can really point you in the right direction on how to set up your website. So it's amazing how often people go six months, a year, two years, and they say, well, it's not really performing the way I want, and then they book an audit. And then we tell them, well, if you do it this way, this way, this way, they, they immediately see better results. And the comment I always hear is, I wish I had done this from the beginning rather than wait a year, just invest a little bit in my business and, and get that advice, get that consultation. Of course, uh, the second time, the, the second example of this being very useful is when you have an existing website, you're not quite getting the results that you want and you'd like somebody to go in there and see how you've set it up, see the strategies you're implementing, the pricing, um, 
um, see all this, the, the features you've activated and see if there's some strategies you can implement to help improve those numbers. But the most common time that people book this is right before launch. So a lot of our customers do the setup themselves and then right before they go live to the public, right before they launch their marketing campaign, they would just like somebody on our team to go over everything with them and make sure everything's set up properly before they go live. So those are the, the three scenarios where something like that is useful. Awesome. Well, Kevin Grold was the contest winner this week. Congratulations. Next week's prize, we're not going to reveal what the prize is, uh, but it is going to be huge. So uh, if you're watching the webinar right now and you want to enter the contest of the week, we will announce a random winner next week and reveal the prize. All you need to do is share this message on your Facebook page and we will drop this message into the chat box so uh, you can just copy and paste it. Um, and we'll send a reminder after the webinar as well. But next week's prize is going to be huge. Um, and all you need to do to enter is post this message. I'm using Brilliant Directories as my directory software and love it. Um, launch your own membership website. Check them out here with the link to the brilliantdirectories.com website. Uh, that'll automatically enter you into the contest. Uh, and all you need to do is join us next week. And we'll announce the winner of the contest just like we announced Kevin Grold here. So... Uh, make sure you do this. Promise you, whoever the winner is, you are going to love the price. And as always, we have a deal of the week. And we're actually bringing a deal back that we did two weeks ago. It was so popular, and people continue emailing in that they want the special price. Um, you know, we have a lot of people around the world who weren't able to make it to the webinars and then later found out about the deal of the week. So uh, this week... Um, Back by popular demand, we are going to do the Google Search Assist. Um, the regular price is a 350 one-time payment. If you don't know what the Google Search Assist does, I'm going to show you an example right here. Um, basically, you have your directory website. And if you do a search, uh, I'm just going to use holistichealthfinder.com, who has the add-on there. I'm just going to search for yoga. And... On this site, there are members who have joined as yoga experts, so we're getting member results. What the Google Search Assist does is when there are no member results, so I know there's no members who do yoga in Seattle, so I'll just go ahead and do a search for yoga in Seattle. What the Google Search Assist does is it will provide results from Google that match the keyword of what was searched. So we can see results from Google Seattle Yoga, Seattle Yoga Arts, you get a slew of results that are exactly related to what the visitor was searching. So instead of getting a no results message, let me show you what that looks like. So we'll just type in a, I'll just put a gibberish name in here. And instead of just getting a boring message like this, sorry, we didn't find any results, what you'll get are the best recommended results from Google and why this is beneficial is if someone is searching your site for the first time and they get results like this, they'll probably leave your website and never come back because it wasn't a helpful resource. When visitors actually get results, even though they're not members on your website, at least your website is serving as a valuable resource of information. So people will stay on your site longer um, you'll be able to display more banner ads. So if you have banner ads around your site, um, you'll get more page impressions. Uh, another good thing about this is when someone clicks on a link, it does open in a new tab. So people will stay on your website. So if they don't like what they're seeing, they can always come back to your website. And more and more Google is giving better search, uh, search results rankings to websites that have good user experiences. So if someone is staying on your site longer and actually interacting with it, Google may increase your rankings in their search results. Um, and this is good for you because that's going to help bring more traffic. So if you want more traffic to your site, if you want more people to stay on your site, and you don't necessarily have members in every single combination uh, in, based on location and categories, this is a great way to populate your site. Um, and again, it's my favorite add-on that we've added so far to Brilliant Directories. So we're doing it again. It's the Google Search Assist. Uh, it's a $90 one-time payment to get it added to one of your websites. 
and you can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash promo. After the webinar, we'll also provide a link to that page, and that will be valid uh, through this, this week till, till next week's webinar. So if you don't have it yet, I highly recommend uh, jumping on that add-on. Okay, now it is for the best part of the presentation. Uh, it's where you can ask questions, and we're going to start with you, Donna, today. Donna, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Thanks. Awesome. Donna, where are you calling in from? Um, New York, Long Island. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Uh, what's your question for us today? My question is, can you provide like a demo so I could see if I can navigate it correctly to see if, you know, it wouldn't be too difficult for me to, you know, to use? Absolutely. If you go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash free trial, um, you can try a, a free seven-day trial. We'll give you your own website starting from scratch, um, and then you can build out that site however you like. So you can test out all the features, see if the software has what you need functionality-wise. Um, and then if you want, at the end of the seven-day trial, you can actually convert the site you've been working on to your live website that you're going to continue working on, or we can just give you a, a new fresh site now that you're more familiar with the platform. Right, right, right. And then. Um uh, as far as like getting help, is there a fee for getting help uh, to you know to, to do this if you need help? No, I'm and sure you, you probably you, do. But you yeah. actually segued into something I forgot to mention at the at the beginning of the call um, at the beginning of the webinar. We we do have uh, a lot of support resources. Um, so we do these webinars um, like here. We also have uh, documentation that's that includes a lot of video training. Uh, let me just go there right now. So you can go to bootstrap.brilliantdirectories.com and that'll take you to uh, our documentation. And it's pretty comprehensive and we're updating it uh, daily actually. Um, we're adding new things all the time, you know, updating things. So you can come here and then you can always email support at brilliantdirectories.com. Um, and you can, that's great if you have how-to questions, if something should be working but it's not working for some reason, those are great things to email support at brilliantdirectories.com for, uh, and you can usually um, expect a response within one business day or sooner. Hi, um, thank you. Okay, All appreciate right. it. Uh, great question. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Kevin, are you there? Hello, this is Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Congratulations on winning the contest. Thank you, Jason and Patrick. Great uh, webinar today. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're just getting started a lot of things in the beginning. Um, yeah, what kind of question do you have for us today? Mine's a little bit of a specific question in terms of, uh, I wrote it in the, the chat there, but um, my non-members are inactive when they verify their email and then they instantly become a fully active member on my site without paying. And I'm wondering if there's any way I can change that. Absolutely. Um, do you mind if we check out your site? I'll help you out with that right now. edreferral.com. Okay, so what Kevin is asking is he has a free member sign-up, and when a member signs up for free, uh, they get an email that says, please verify your email address, and just like you join any site, and then if you click that email, it makes their listing public, and you want to avoid that, right, Kevin? Right, I want them to pay first before they become uh, public on the site. Perfect. So all you need to do is uh, is this. We're going to go to your email templates, and we're going to look for the the basic email template. Welcome Basic is what it's called. So for you can choose what email members get when they sign up, and generally the the free members are getting wel Welcome Basic. That includes that verification link. Um, so it looks like you've customized this one. Let's edit this. And so you can see this is the email a free member gets when they sign up. So it says, action required. Please verify your email address. And then it says, you know, to get started, you know, click verify your email address. And if they click on these links, it will set their account to public. So I'm not going to totally mess with this, Kevin, but all you need to do is a few things. First of all, get rid of these links. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, and then, you, you know, these variables are your website name. So you can, right, I can type that in. Yeah. Type that in. Um, so you can say, like, uh, we are uh, currently uh, reviewing your account. And then you can say, um, 
in order to turn your free listing into a searchable listing on our website, and then you can say, please upgrade to a um, paid, paid membership. account. And then you can pro provide a link for them to at least log into their account. So even someone who might who is an active can still log into their account. Um, and you can basically, in this email, let them know what the steps are um, for, uh, for, for getting activated. Um, so instead of please verify your, your email address, you could say uh, your listing is under review or something like that. So now we've Perfect. that helps thank you. Yeah, we've eliminated the ability for them to click that verify email link which then does activate their uh, listing. So um, J Jason, if I might, uh, there's another strategy that's very uh, popular as well because some customers want to know if it's a real email or not. So they don't want to remove that functionality of the email template. So another thing that's very popular is could you go to the products page please, Jason? Do you want me to save this for you, Kevin, or do you want to yes, come back? Please. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes, please save it. Okay. All right. Where Where is that, Pat? The, the products page under finance. All right. All right. So another thing, Kevin, that you can do is, which is the free level here um, that, that people are starting up? Non-member. So one thing you could do with that level is you could call it non-members unverified, and you can make that level unsearchable. And in the email template, you can let them know currently your, your account is inactive, and in order for it to become active, uh, you need to upgrade to this other level, however you want to do it. So you don't necessarily need to remove the functionality of them being able to verify an email, because it is helpful for you to know if it's a real email or not, um, and, but, but you would just make them non-searchable. So that's another easy option. But I would lose the 300 people who I have currently listed as non-numbers on the website, is that correct? You would probably, well in this case, do you want them to be active for free? Do you want them to be searchable if they haven't paid anything? Um, yeah, i got to figure that out because some of the non-members, I do want them to be able to see the their listings. It's just somehow people are getting full profiles filled out and um, activating their, their entire site. This is a very limited version of the membership on, on this level. Okay, so that's one, that's one option, and the other option, Jason, if you can go to the Generals uh, tab that you're in right there. All right, so this is pretty powerful what we're going to show you here, and it's not utilized by a lot of our members. If, if this, in the email template, if you were to send them instructions that in order for their website to appear active on the profile, they need to upgrade, you can make the redirect page after login you can make it go straight to the upgrade page. So when they go and they log into their account, they're always going to be taken to the page for them to upgrade their account to activate it. So you can also utilize that strategy to really drive people to upgrade their account and make it easy to find where they need to go to upgrade their account without needing a lot of instructions. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. That looks good. Super, actually, uh, super, super suggestions, Pat. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but you can do, I'm not going to save anything here, Kevin, but you could make the listing searchable on website to know. Um, so that way they, they'll still be active on your site, but no one, they don't have a public profile. So same, same effect. And then just to push more people towards upgrading, yeah, redirect page after login, set it to upgrade. They can still go to other areas once they log in as a member, but this will be the first place they're sent to. Yeah, we've, we have a lot of customers that utilize this. Also, they want them to go to a landing page after they sign up where they promote additional services to their members. They, up that, they update that page often. So that box where you can control what, where somebody goes to after they log in is a very powerful tool for directory owners to use. Thank you very much. And when you get around to me again, I want to find out more about the new billing platform. Okay, great, Kevin, for sure. Thank you for your great question. Thanks. All right, Jason, I have a, a question from Cindy who says she does not have a mic, and she's asking uh, what, how does she, she has United States in the member profile pages, and she's asking, is there any way to remove United States from the URL? All right, yeah, we do have a setting for that, and uh, let's, uh, let's look at an example right now. We'll just, uh, we'll just continue using uh, Kevin's here. So if you go to a member's profile page, usually for search engine optimization purposes or if you have a site that's 
you know, has members in lots of different countries, it's going to, this is a member's profile page here, it's going to have United States in the, in the URL. Uh, let me go to another site where I, we can show you how to remove the country. So it will just, um, it, it won't include the country because it could be redundant if it's, you know, if, if we know that this, the country is Australia, there's no need to repeat it there. Uh, so let's, let's go to a site that I can actually uh, test that on. Yeah, so oftentimes if it's a local directory, so let's say it's a city directory or it's a state or province directory, uh, people want to have as local of a feel to the directory as they can. So utilizing this advanced setting uh, and removing the country from the member URL is very helpful. Just one important note that's very important to know if anybody does this uh, after watching this webinar, you need to resave the contact details form of your members um, in order for the URL to update. So by turning this setting on, it's not going to magically change all of your member URLs, but the next time your member logs in or when new members sign up on your site, their member profile page will no longer have that country in the URL. Exactly. So let's, um, let's see here. We can revert this afterwards. So I just saved this member here. Oh, it looks like this one's already doing it. So let me show you guys the setting, but uh, you can see that it doesn't say United States here uh, in the in the URL. And the advanced setting for that, Pat, do you remember off the top of your head what the advanced setting for that was? I think it's, uh, I think you could put in localized. And that may, no, if you could put in uh, country perhaps. Yeah. My apologies. Limit, okay, keep scrolling down. Here we go. Replace country, there it is. That's what it is. Okay, so if, if there's a country, so this is an advanced setting. So you can go to settings, advanced settings. And a good thing to do is you can change this one, uh, replace country name variable with state name variable. So it won't attempt to put the country name in the URL. Uh, you could just set this to one. And um, if there's a country saved for the person in the URL of their profile page, uh, it'll remove the country and it'll replace it with a state if a state is available. If there's no state available, it'll, it'll default to the city. And if not, then it, it won't show anything for the location of that person. So, um, and, and, the one and the one below that, Jason, enable local member URL is the one they have to set to one so that future members will continue to have the state in their URL. Okay, so that's a good thing. So if you don't want the country name in the URL of the member profiles, set both of these to one. Replace country name with state name and enable local member URL structure. So you can set these both to one and it will remove the country from the, uh, the URL. Okay, that's a good question. And a lot of advanced features that we have here, advanced settings, so it's good that we can get this granular with the, with the software. Okay, Hayes. Uh, Hayes, is your microphone working? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, where are you calling Hello? in from? Yep, yep, we can hear you perfectly. I am in Calgary. Uh, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us uh, today. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I had a question. Let, let's say I want to build out a, a directory, uh, you know, a property, and I want to grow it, and I want to scale it, and I want to sell it. You know, I don't own the IP. I don't own really, you know, the own directory. How, how does that work? How, I mean, if it does work at all, is, it, yep. is that something I'd be able to do? Yep. Um, so with Brilliant Directories, um, if you wanted to, you know, we are a software as a service, um, but we do have a one-time pay option where you can at least keep the site online with us for life. So if you ever developed a site with Brilliant Directories and then wanted to sell it to another party or individual, I would just recommend that you have the one-time pay option connected to the site, so the new owner of the site will also have um, will have this with Brilliant Directories. And I would disclose with the person that you're selling it to that the site is uh, powered and hosted by Brilliant Directories. And if they sure. wanted if they wanted to keep it operating in its in its current form, which they obviously bought it because they love what they saw, uh, that they should maintain the site with Brilliant Directories. Got it. Got it. All right, great question about selling a site that you've uh, developed. Uh, Frank, uh, Mr. Frank, how are you today? 
Big Frank? Big Frank, how you doing, my man? Hey. Um, I don't really have a question. I just checked in to see how everybody was doing. Thank you. We're doing great, Frank. Great to hear from you. It's, it's How's always it going over there. Great. And you know, in the past, you have been uh, giving people my number to give me a call to ask questions, and feel free to be able to do that anytime you like. Hey, Frank. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. I appreciate everything you've done for me. And uh, like I always uh, told you, I. I Tried to do this for a couple years, and you were the guys that made my directory dream come true. So you always have a friend here. All right, Frank. Well, it's always a pleasure to work with you, and uh, definitely look forward to, to hopping on the phone and seeing what you've been up to recently. I know you always uh, you always have a lot going on. Yeah, we'll get together soon. I'll send you an email. All right. Thanks, Frank. Thanks so much. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for joining us today. That's Big Frank. He's been with us uh, for quite a while, has several directory sites with us, and uh, yeah, it's great that he was able to, to join us uh, today. John, uh, I've unmuted your microphone there. Hello. Hey, John. How are you today? I cannot complain. Um, I wanted answer. to verify if there, <laughs> if there was an option um, to do a 90-day or 30-day trial that automatically converts over to a paid account, or if that was something that may be on the roadmap for the future. That's a great question. So what John is asking is when his members join his directory, he wants to offer them uh, a free trial period, you know, 14 days, 30 days. And then after that free trial period, if they don't cancel their account, uh, their account will automatically be charged the normal membership rate of whatever he's decided on his site. John, there's two things that are in the roadmap related to that. Uh, one of them is free trial periods. and um, I think Kevin asked about the billing updates. Uh, that is going to be one of the billing up, updates that's going to be rolled out soon. Um, so look forward to that uh, this year, definitely. And then the other thing that we're going to be rolling out, John, are coupon codes. So you can create promotional coupon codes that will give your members discounts during the sign-up process um, uh, when, they, when they sign up to your website. So we're really looking forward to coupon codes or promotional codes that you can create and distribute, and that's great for marketing, um, as well as free trial periods. So you can give your members you know, a no-risk opportunity to, to, to try your directory website and then convert them to a paid member um, in the future. So they are on the roadmap. Um, I don't have an exact date yet, but, but uh, it has been highly requested. So we're doing our best to push that up the, uh, the totem pole of uh, features that we're launching. Perfect. I really appreciate that. All right, John. Do um, you have any other questions? That was a pretty simple one. I, I know it's one per person, but uh, any any questions related to your site or anything? Um, I, I need to schedule my review. Uh, I have that in, set up already. I just haven't done it yet. So uh, Okay. Everything looks good so far. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, John. Thanks for the question. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, great question. Yeah, we do have a feature roadmap. Um, if you go to our... Uh, community forum, you do need to be logged in uh, to access it, but um, we do have uh, an area where you can suggest uh, features um, and, uh, and things like that, and then we can vote for features that uh, will actually get into uh, development. So, um, yeah, you can go to bootstrap.brillingdirectories.com, go to the community forum, and uh, yeah, suggest features, and, and the ones that get the most votes sometimes, uh, you know, we'll consider those. Tom's asking, he's saying that he created a static page, but he wants this new page that he created to be members only. Um, and he wants to know if that's possible with our software. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, so just so everyone knows um, what he's referring to, so um, in this example, like Holistic Health Finder, this is a search results page. This is a dynamic page. The, the system automatically creates the search results pages. It automatically creates... Uh, the members profile pages you don't need to manually make these pages one by one but a lot of times people want to make resource pages or you know pages about you know like this is how it works this is what's considered a static page you you kind of design it and develop it yourself and sometimes you want to create these pages but you want them to be for members only uh, so let me show you exactly how you could turn a static page. Um, it could be your How It Works page or a private page with awesome links and resources that you only want your members to have access to. Um, so let me log. I'm, I'm currently logged in as this member. Let me log out. And let me refresh the page here. So now I'm logged out and I, I see all the get listed links here. 
So what we can do is I'm logged into the admin of Holistic Health Finder. So I have this uh, nifty uh, admin bar here, which is uh, amazing. We have other videos that explain this bar a little better. But I'm going to edit this static page, the How It Works page. And when you edit a How It Works page, there is an option, display options here. You can set a page to members only. So this is like your regular text editor. You can also view the source code um, just while we're in here as a side note. So if you're more comfortable editing the source code, you can definitely do that. Uh, or you can just use the, uh, the WYSIWYG here. So if you want to set a custom static page, this is the about page to members only. Just go ahead and click this box here. And I'm going to save the changes. And if I go back to the site, I'm not logged in as a member. If I refresh the page, I'm, it says you must log in to view this page. So I'm automatically redirected to a login page. So this is a really easy way, a very simple way to protect some of your you know, premium content and require people to join your site or log in before viewing it. So let's set this back to you know, public. We'll remove the members only page option. And if I attempt to go back to the How It Works page, I should be able to. And, yep, we can go to the How It Works page. While we're here, let me show you some of these other neat option display options here. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with these. Um, one of them is hiding the header, hiding the footer. Um, if you're familiar with uh, SEO, you can make the page no index, no follow if you wanted to. You can also hide the main menu if you wanted to. So this is really great if you wanted to create a landing page. Um, let me actually hide all these things and let's see what the page looks like afterwards. So, you know, usually with a landing page, you want full control of what the person is, is looking at, especially if you're running ads to a landing page. And you don't necessarily want the main menu and the, and the logo and everything because you want to hyper-focus someone on funneling them to doing one certain action. So I, I hid the menu and all that stuff. Let's refresh the page. So now you can see we have more of a white page, just the content that's here. Even the footer is gone. I can't even scroll or do anything. So if you really wanted to, you could create a landing page that doesn't include your logo or your header or your footer or anything like that. Let's just add the main Jason, menu. Yep. Jason, could you explain, because you, you, obviously you have a background in marketing, could you explain why? Why would I create a landing page and hide my menu, hide my footer, hide my header? Why is it good to have a landing page where the person cannot leave that page? When you're, when you're investing ad dollars to bring someone to your website and your goal is to get them to register for a newsletter or to sign up for an ebook download and the goal is to capture an email address, you want to, and, and not in all cases, but generally speaking, you want to limit the, limit the options of what someone can do on a page. You want the focus to be on the action you want them to perform. So again, whether that's purchasing something or entering their email address for something, you've all been to landing pages where there's really nothing on the page except uh, you know, just some, some, a little bit of content and then a form to fill out. So by hyper-focusing a page, you're going to increase conversion rates and your ad dollars are going to work better for you. Now, again, it depends on what your goals are and, and you know, what you're trying to do. But generally speaking, when you're directing people to a landing page, the goal is to convert that visitor to do something. And it's always best to limit um, where that visitor can go. So, you know, if they came to this page and it was a landing page and then, you know, now they're on the home page, you know, maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you, you lost an opportunity to collect their email address on the landing page. So, um, yeah, that's, so the options there with Brilliant Directory is to just easily hide these things and create awesome landing pages if you, if you wanted to. And, and Jason, while we're, thank you, that's a great explanation. While we're on the members only, uh, we had another question a, um, asked from Ramon, uh, Ramon asking, can you make the blog members only? So instead of a, just a static page, he wants everything to be open, but he would like his blog to be members only. Gotcha. So let me just switch on over to our, our demo site, which has all the features activated, the, the publishing content, the type of content you can publish. So 
what's really cool about brilliant directories is so all of these things coupons events jobs just think of them as different types of content that you can publish um, you know we have themes that focus on on them like coupons and and events but really they're just focusing on one type of content you can publish so one one type of content is the blog and as you can see here, I was able to go to the, uh, the blog article section. But there is a way to make this for members only as well. So only members can read the blog articles or only members can view the coupons. So let me log out of this account, John Smith. And um, let me, uh, this is our demo, so I can kind of just uh, log into the, uh, the admin panel here. Give me one moment. And I will show you how you can make the blog members only, as well as the other publishing, the types of content you can publish members only as well. All right, so now I'm in the admin area, and I'll close down some of these windows here. Okay, and I'm not logged in as a member. Let me refresh the page. So you can see I'm not logged in as that, that member again. So let's go into the admin area. If you wanna make a specific type of content members only, just head on over to the content section, go to edit post settings. And in this case, we're going to edit the blog, uh, the blog articles. So let me just find that. Let's do a search here. Here we go. Uh, whoops. Sorry, guys. All right, this is articles. Okay, so let's look for the articles. I think they were right here. So I'm going to edit the articles content, and under the general settings, there's a lot of settings for each, uh, again, you get a lot of control. If you're not a developer or anything, you don't really need to worry about this, but at the bottom of the general settings tab for the, you know, for the articles or the blog articles, and this is for all your different types of content, there's an option here, can, can anyone view these posts? And by default, it's set to yes. But if you set that to no, it's going to be members only. And on top of that, you, need, you can specify which members can view that content. So maybe you have premium coupons or premium blog articles. You can assign which specific members have access to this type of content. So I just set the articles to no. And if we refresh this page we should get a message, this content is for members only. For access, please log in or become a member. So again, this is really good to make your premium content private, to encourage lower membership levels, to upgrade to higher membership levels. And all you need to do is just a few clicks of the mouse to protect the content. Um, and this will, and then now that it's, now that not everyone can view this content, under your managed products, and I'll just go to edit one of the products, the basic membership level. Under post publishing, you'll notice there's can post and can view. So when, when a type of content is not public, you need to choose which membership levels can view it. So you get a lot of control over which members can post content as well as view private content. And that's how you get a really good members uh, uh, members only website with protected content. So if you got a lot of juicy content that people want, instead of giving it away for free, force them to join as a paid member and then they can view that special content. Good question. Yeah, the works Brilliant Directors is awesome for protecting content for creating, you know, a members only website or a premium content type of website. So really good question, Pat. All right, Jason. Um, so I actually have a question here from Benjamin, and he's asking um, how well, how do the lead stages work? Uh, so I think I know what he's referring to. So m maybe you can uh, send the the presentation over to me, and I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, for this one. Absolutely. So I think what Benjamin's talking about is when somebody tries to contact one of his members. So if he has somebody, uh, so there's a website visitor, contacts a member, that's what we call a lead. So there's a lead management 
engine that comes with the Brilliant Directories platform. It's personally my favorite piece of the software. And that allows a directory owner to make sure that when somebody submits a lead, when somebody tries to contact the members, to make sure those website visitors are getting answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, match leads. Can you show us just very quickly um, where on a site would, would a website visitor submit a, a quote unquote lead? Uh, sure thing. Let's go to the demo site while I do that. Perfect. So there's a couple of places that people would go to submit a lead. Every directory website comes with a get match page. It's, it's not automatically shown on the main menu, but a lot of our uh, users use the get match form for ask a quote, ask a question, get matched, and basically the public fills out a single form and then you, the directory owner, can match that inquiry to the members that fit the criteria. So you can have a category uh, filter in here. You can go by location so that if somebody's looking for a mechanic in San Francisco, that you would send that inquiry to the mechanics in San Francisco. So, so that's a, that's a, sorry to interrupt you. So that's a lead for the, the members, for the professional members, potential lead for the professional members. That is a potential lead for the professional members. And then the other area that's most common for leads is on the profile pages themselves. When somebody goes to contact a member and they fill out the form to contact them, that also goes into the same lead engine. Okay. So, so go ahead, Jason. Yeah, and I think it's important to note here. So when a consumer or website visitor wants to contact one of your professional members, you can decide, do you want this message to go directly to the member without any moderation for free? Or similar to an Angie's List or a Thumbtack or Home Advisor site, somebody can fill out this, we call it a lead form, and you can actually sell the lead to the member for a nominal price, whatever makes sense, $5, $500, it just depends on the industry. So your site, when, it, when visitors come to your site, is going to be generating what we call leads from the consumers who want to contact your members. And one of the great business models with Brilliant Directories and revenue sources are selling these leads from the consumers back to your members. And if the leads are good quality leads, your members are going to love your site and they're going to keep buying leads every single month. All right, thank you, Jason. So one of the things that Brilliant Directories does to help manage these leads, all of these inquiries coming in, and I think that was Benjamin's question, is using the different stages. So where, it, again, I went to leads and the match leads area, and you can see that there's different tabs that are open. This allows you to basically manage your leads. So when I click on the accepted tab, this means that somebody, on the, one of the members, one of the professionals, one of the businesses accepted the lead. The, the way that the system's notified of this is the email that gets sent to your members has a link that takes your member to their dashboard. Maybe we'll, we'll do a full overview of this in a future webinar where they're then asked to accept the lead. There's a button they click and that's what notifies the system that they accepted it. So in this case, I can see that one person accepted the lead and I matched it to five people. So if, if I want to go ahead and see who accepted this lead, I would click on the match icon. This would then allow me to identify which member accepted this lead. So you can see all the leads that were sent, the ones that accepted and the one that, uh, that declined. So here scrolling down, these are the matched leads, the matched members. I can see that this member has it pending this member has it pending, but if we scroll down, we should see who accepted it, and here we go. This member took the time to accept this lead. For me, the directory owner, this is extremely valuable information because I'm gonna call, if this is a free member, I may wanna call them and try to upsell them or just see how things are going and see if I could build a relationship because this person has interacted with my website. They've logged into their dashboard, they know who this, who I am, who the business is, so it's a great time to reach out to them. Also, I'm able to see how many leads people received in total. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another sales stage, and that is the sold out sales stage. This is my favorite one, because what this means is it means that the maximum limit, because you can send this to 100 members, and you can tell the software, when three people accept the lead, 
I don't want anyone else to be able to accept the lead. This gives you maximum exposure to the members, so more people find out about your website, but it also protects the users, the person that submitted the form from getting spam, getting a spam experience. If they fill out the form and they get 20 emails from 20 different providers, they may not come to your website again to ask for services. So this caps, three people can accept it, and that means that one person, when something is flagged as sold out, it means that one person tried to accept the lead and were told, we're sorry this lead is now sold out. So if I want to identify who that member was, all I need to do is to click on the match icon, scroll down, and again, I'm going to be looking at the lead statuses. Um, and we're going to, whoops, my apologies, we're going to keep scrolling. Here we go. So Jorge tried to accept the lead and had it sold out. I think this is also a great opportunity to call Jorge when it happens and say, hey, Jorge, I see you tried to accept the lead. It sold out. Here's why it sold out and give them some good customer support. So it's a lot of good insight uh, with regards to that. And as you can see in the far column, you can also see a quick history of all of the leads that your members are getting. So it gives you some good insight on, oh wow, I see that Moises accepted two leads. Maybe I should give him a call. Maybe he's a good person to call next. So, so those are two very useful lead stages. In all, we have pending, accepted, requires a call back. So this is a good, um, lead stage if you, you want to set a reminder for yourself. You want something to stand out. So I like to choose this lead setting, which you can manually customize here because I want a reminder. I want to tell myself, Patrick, you need to click on match again. There's somebody in there that you want to tell yourself you need to call. So, so these are the different lead settings. When you're done with a lead, you move it to closed. And of course, there's a, there's, you can also label something as a bad lead if it's a spam lead that came in so that they're not mixed in with your other leads. And, and those are essentially the different lead stages that are available to you. That's great. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple to wrap your head around it. Basically, you're making sure that, you know, when usually you're gonna sell leads in most cases and you wanna make sure you've maximized the, the sale of a lead. So you can match a lead with three members or four members. You can choose how many members get to purchase that lead. Um, and that way you can make sure you're maximizing revenue from the leads and you get some great stats here. So you know Pat brought up a great point. You can follow up with people based on different stages. Maybe they need, need a little nudge. Um, but it creates really good customer service opportunities. And a lot of people wonder, you know, how do I start my site? I don't have any members. When, when you start getting your first members, don't be afraid to call them and create a good relationship with them because you're trying to foster long-term relationships. And if you can identify activity in leads or when they're signing up to your site, um, you can use this information as a stepping stone and a, as an olive branch to establish a nice relationship with someone who might be a little unsure about your website or your program or what, you know, what you're offering exactly. So, um, yeah, this is great data and it can be used to both maximize revenue and foster better relationships with your members. Great question there. We did have Greg that asked a question. I promise we get it in. Maybe we'll just make that the last quick question here. And he's saying that he, he has a video directory, and he wants, on the member profile pages, he wants the videos to display before the overview tab. So he doesn't, right now, when you go to the overview tab, you see the map and the directions and so forth. So I thought that that might be a good question to go over. That's an awesome question. So this is our demo site. And that's actually a super question. So you'll notice there's different tabs here. This guy obviously has everything, um, specialties, reviews. But let's say you wanted the videos to be the first one. You do have control over the order of these tabs. And let me show you exactly how to do that. And we're gonna, in this example, we'll move the video to the first slot there. So uh, let me go back to that page of John Smith. This is a good question to, to end on as well. And again, we, we tried our best to get to all the questions. We're just a little short on time here today. So let's go to John Smith and let's see how we do this exactly. So he's got a lot of tabs here. He's got every feature in the book here. I mean, post con type of content you can post. So let's move the videos to the first slot. So where you want to go is into the content section and go to edit post settings. So the different types of posts are the different types of content your members can publish, such as properties, products, job openings, so on and so forth. 
So right now, the overview tab is the first one, and that's actually the listing one. Let's open the listing. And what you wanna look at is the profile page design. And we can see the tab order is set to one. So that's gonna be the first thing it's, it goes based on number. So if this is number one and something else is number two, whatever is number two, which is specialties, is going to be next, and then so on and so forth. You can also enter zero, so that'll be the lowest number, and that's what we'll enter for the video. So let's edit the video feature. Go to profile page design, and right now the tab order is set to 13. So it's one of the last ones. Let's just set that to zero. That'll be before one and I'll save the changes. By the way, you can use Control S on these pages, so if you're scrolling down, you don't have to go and click the Save Changes buttons. Control S works. And if we refresh his page here, we should see this video go to the number one spot. Perfect. And now we see Videos is the first tab that's opened on his profile. It's in the number one spot. And you can do the same thing with all the different features for a member pro for for uh, for the member profile pages. So you get a lot of good control over what you want first. So if you're a real estate site, you may not need the the this information here about their business. Maybe you want to show the property listings um, because it's very visual, and you know a lot of the contact information is up here anyways at the top. So you can choose what you want the order of your tabs to be. That's a super question. That's correct, because we have events websites, they focus on events. The events tab, of course, should be the first. If it's a job site, of course, the job tab should be the first. You've got to decide what is the most relevant uh, content. Another thing I love, even if you have a generic directory and it doesn't have a specific type of content that you're focused on, like coupons or events, I personally like to not use the overview tab, because I find it's not very colorful as well as many of us know the Google map is the only thing that needs to load, so it might take a, a half second to load. So I like to start with something more colorful, like the photo gallery, videos, events, coupons, and so forth. And I actually like to have my overview tab as one of the last ones uh, to give people uh, quick access to more useful information for the general public, more interactive. Yep. High quality images keep people on the site. They make the site look more credible. So any opportunity you have a time to uh, a chance to present higher quality images over plain text. Um, obviously, there's a there's a place and a time and place for each one of those on your site um, to to showcase those. But uh, definitely, people respond to images, and it kind of makes your site a little easier to use um, because people you know feel comfortable looking at images um, related to the content that they're searching for. So that was a great great final question. Um, we are running out of time here. I do want to mention the contest of the week again. Just share this message on Facebook. I'm using Brilliant Directories as my directory software and love it. Um, launch your own membership site. Check them out. And also the deal of the week, um, we brought it back due to popular demand. Google Search Assist, it's 90 bucks. You can get Google search results on your website in the event there are no member results to display, so you'll always have something showing on your website. Don't forget to register for next week's next week's webinar. Uh, next week will be at our normal time at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, you can register right after the webinar. Uh, we'll provide a link to everyone. The spaces are filling up faster and faster, so whether you think you can make it or not, based on that time, it's always good to save your seat. And yeah, um, it was great, great being with everyone here today. Yeah, this was definitely one of my favorite ones yet, and I can't wait to be here uh, next week and get to answer some more of your questions. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a Thank great you. week. Thanks, everyone. Have a great super week. Bye-bye.